These are called nakers. They're unpitched and they would have been carried on horseback, rather like their slightly later cousins, the timpani, but also sometimes by poor human minions. The first big innovation of timpani was when someone realised it might be quite a good idea to stop trying to play them while you're carrying them around and actually put them down. Now, timpani, we're quite good at beginnings and we're very good at endings. I like to think of us as sort of the icing on the cake, the arrival point of a big exciting moment. And there's none more exciting than this. Zadok the priest played at every British coronation since 1727. The violins and the orchestra are building up the tension. And by the time I play my first note, the violins will already have played 345 notes. Here we've got a selection of my Baroque timpani, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about the differences. Uh, these drums are very precious to me. They're uh, about 300 years old, we think, and uh, they show the size of their age, although I sometimes think that good drums of the period would probably not have survived at all because metal does decay over time. I love these drums, but they're only useful for certain things. They can only play in DNA, and you'll notice that they only have these pegs. And that's because the tuning was done by a separate spanner. And that tells us that you couldn't tune the drum very quickly. If you think of it more like a harpsichord or a piano, that you tune the drum before you play it. And because the heads were very thick long ago, and because the drum was so small, they wouldn't go out of tune very quickly, as modern timpani do. These drums originally had the skins lapped or tucked directly onto the main hoop. The smaller a drum is, the thicker the head needs to be, in order to sound good for the range of notes we need. But heads on timpani like this are quite thick for another reason. Small slits need to be cut to allow the metal loops for tensioning to poke through. And so the head must be strong enough that these slits don't grow bigger over time as the drum is played. In Baroque times, drums like this would have usually stayed in one church, perhaps for decades. Very small timpani with thick heads can be unpredictable. But if the drums are kept where temperature and climate is reasonably stable, they can settle to have a fairly consistent sound and pitch. Today, we are constantly on the move, and different venues obviously have a wide variety of climates and acoustics. Combined with already disturbing these instruments simply by transporting them, something as normal as a sudden rainstorm can quickly and drastically change the pitch of a drum. Add to that modern-day issues such as air conditioning and dry central heating, and getting a good note can sometimes be virtually impossible, and there isn't a lot you can do about it. These are the same drums, but on the left, you can see that they have a separate black steel hoop. The skins are mounted on their own hoop, meaning that the heads can be a bit thinner, making them more reliable and easier to work with. So this drum is 300 years old, and this drum is three years old. It's one that I designed as a kind of copy, and it's that similar deep shape which we see in modern timpani later on. I use these drums for Bach, where I want a sonorous, deep sound, and don't need to worry so much about articulation. Bach's music was written for and performed in churches just like this one. quite deep drums to get a boomy and sonorous sound to help the bass. As usual for music of this period, we play with the trumpets, but it's not at all triumphant. With 
sparse scoring, we can easily be heard and don't have to work hard with articulation. People often assume that old-style timpani should always look old as well. Nowadays, like brass instruments, we lacquer drums, which prevents oxygen getting to the copper. But these old and lacquer drums have naturally changed colour over time. And although this looks quite appealing, I am not sure that this is what would have happened many years ago. In Baroque times, drums were used in church and for ceremonial occasions, and I'm fairly sure that they would not have been allowed to be on show in anything other than immaculate condition. By now, my extremely old drums are simply too fragile to go through the polishing process, and so they will just continue to grow old gracefully. It's interesting to look quickly at how drums changed. The drums on the right were used for Bach. These small, early drums needed help with sound and the bass frequencies, which explains the deep, slightly square shape. As the orchestra expanded and timpani playing got louder via Mozart, Haydn and Beethoven, the drums gradually got larger, but it was still necessary for them to be dry and punchy and not swamp the orchestra, and this explains why the bowls needed to become shallower. The two most important Baroque composers for timpani used us in quite different ways. When we play Bach, it is as a church musician, and his writing gives us a combined role of playing rhythms with the trumpets, but also supporting the harmony and bass line. Handel, on the other hand, often used timpani in music for royal and ceremonial occasions, which are obviously often outdoors and quite noisy, and his writing for us is very much from a military background. These drums over here are English, made by potters, and they're old cavalry drums. These are modern copies, and you'll notice instantly that they're much shallower, and they make a much more percussive sound. So if I just demonstrate you can hear the differences. This is the percussive English drum used for handle. And this is the, the deep, sonorous German shape. music's in sections A and B, and the timpani only plays with the trumpets, so now you can hear the horns and the woodwind. The original performance had a mammoth orchestra with nine trumpets, three timpanists and six snare drummers, we think. It would have been quite hard for the timpanists to cut through.